Hello, and welcome to the ESP tutorial about SOC integration and FPGA emulation flow. This tutorial will integrate the multiply and accumulate accelerator that we designed during the previous tutorial about the system C design flow. Note that all of the integration steps can be used to integrate any of the accelerators available in the ESP release. This is the summary of the steps that you will learn today to integrate an existing accelerator into an ESP instance. You will generate wrappers and sockets, then you will configure the system, compile the bare metal application, run full system simulation, run logic synthesis for FPGA, compile Linux, and finally run the target application on a full system FPGA based emulation. The first step, make SLD gen, generates for you all of the ESP sockets necessary to integrate the accelerator into the ESP system. Then you will run an interactive configuration GUI that allows you to floor plan your ESP instance. You can then compile the bare metal driver and run a full system simulation in model sim. Through Vivado, you will be able to generate an FPGA bit stream for your design. Optionally, you can configure the Linux user space application to run different configurations of your accelerator. This step will be shown in a more advanced tutorial about the software API. Make Linux will generate the Linux image and the boot ROM image, including the device tree for the system. Finally, you can deploy your instance onto FPGA and boot Linux. First of all, we can take a look at the bare metal device driver code skeleton that has been generated for you by the accelerator initialization script. You can find the link to the tutorial about the multiply and accumulator design in the description below. To make this code working, you only need to change the load memory and the validation functions. And it turns out that these edits are exactly the same that you had to do in your unit test bench. So we can go into the high level synthesis design folder, open the test bench files, and copy the load memory and the validation function from here. In this case, validation was already correct. So we're only going to copy the initialization function for the input data. While the system C test bench was in C++, this is C code. So a few edits are necessary. Specifically, we need to move the declaration of the loop index outside of the loops. These are all the changes required to complete the bare metal application code. The rest of the code can be used as is to run full system simulation and FPGA emulation in bare metal. We can now move to the design folder, which in this particular case is configured for the Xilinx VCU118 development board, and run the ESP configuration GUI. A default configuration will show up where you will see one CPU tile, one memory tile, and one IO tile. We can place into the empty tile available, the multiply and accumulate accelerator that we have previously generated with the HLS target. And then we generate the configuration of the system. The SLD gen target shows that all of the wrappers have been generated for the available accelerators, including our multiply and accumulate and some information is printed for you. Then, with a simple make target, you can run Vivado and synthesize the entire ESP instance that integrates your accelerator. In the meanwhile, we can go and look at the user space application. You will see the same initialization function that we changed for the bare metal code. We can open the bare metal application and copy the input initialization code from there. Again, 
This is all that is required for you to have a fully working application, this time in Linux. We will leave the rest of the configuration for a more advanced tutorial. Now, we can run the bare metal compilation target and then start a full system simulation using the bare metal driver as a test program. From the model sim common shell, you can run the simulation. Note that this can also be run with GUI support if you need to debug through waveforms. At the beginning of the simulation, the bus controllers in the system will print information about the memory mapping. This is inherited from GRLib. As the program continues, all of the print statements in your program will show in the model sim shell. The device tree gets scanned even in bare metal. And if the target accelerator is found, matching the unique ID that you selected when initializing the accelerator, then the program will run a test. When the simulation is completed, we can exit model sim. And now we can try and compile the user space application and the device drive. However, to do so, we first need to compile Linux. In fact, all device drivers must be compiled against a Linux tree which has already been compiled for the target architecture, in this case, RISC-V. Make Linux not only builds Linux, but it also compiles and embeds into a root file system image all of the device drivers and applications for the available accelerators. Logic synthesis can take a while, so we've pre-built the bitstream for this tutorial. In this screen, you see a serial interface connected to the target FPGA on the right. On the left, we are running the FPGA program target. This target invokes Vivado and programs the FPGA based on two environment variables, which default values is set into the local make file in the design folder. And it assumes that your FPGA is connected to the computer that is running ESP. Once the FPGA is programmed, we can run the targets to run both bare metal and or Linux on FPGA. FPGA run will run the bare metal program on the target FPGA. This is the same test that we simulated before in ModelSim. FPGA run Linux will load the boot ROM image and the Linux image, and then send the reset to the processor cores, after which you will see on the serial interface Linux booting on the ESP instance, in this case on the target Ariane core. When the boot process completes, the device drivers are automatically loaded for you. As you can see, the multiply and accumulator has been discovered. In the application test folder, you will find the user space application that was generated and customized. And the test can be run in Linux. From the entire USP team, thank you for watching this video tutorial. We hope you liked it and would appreciate your feedback in the comment below. You can find more information and detailed instructions about this tutorial and others on the ESP website. If you have any question or suggestion, please contact us through our mailing list or the GitHub repository through the issue page. Thank you, and see you at the next video.